Hi guys, now I show you a video about how I'm forging a sizzle that is a tool for demolition um, parts from buildings and in this video you see a bit the process how I do this from heating up the steel forging with this hammer that is a air pressure hammer not a steam hammer it's a Bechel hammer a very old hammer around the 30s or 40s of the years and um, you see in this video the steps um, in the first part of the video you see how I heat it up I use a special kind of fire coal that is a special kind of coal to produce a very high, high uh, temperature I need a forging temperature around 1000 degrees Celsius because you need a special color from the steel. And this color of the steel is more like a yellow to green, uh, yellow to orange, and that is why I need this special kind of um, coal. You cannot use any coal. You need this, this specific coal um, that is a stone coal, not a wood um, coal. And the stone coal is um, ingested with oil. There's a special kind of oil inside. They um, dig it out with huge diggers in the mine or from the coal mine. And then they inject oil to this coal. And with this oil and combine of the, co and the coal produces high amount of heat. In the later part of this video, you see um, how I form with this forging hammer and the beer this chisel out. A chisel is a um, very sharp tool to break for, par for example concrete parts for, from apartments, bunkers or streets in little pieces to transport it later with a digger and a semi out of the construction yard or use this um, chisel to work in the mine. And this chisel has a very, very sharp edge in front of the front of the tool. And I forged this tool and I need um, in the bottom part of the forging hammer a matrix, that is a matrix, in a specific angle. And then I use a bear, that is the upper part, the hammer itself. And they make this, the hammer make this up and down movement, what you see on this video. This hammer, on this special hammer, has a weight around from 40 kilograms. It's a very small hammer. There are some hammers in, out in the construction world that has up to the, maybe the biggest hammer was where I used was in Schwerin. This hammer has around 100 ton. And the biggest worldwide hammer is in the Saarschmiede. This hammer has around 25,000 tons per, per impact. And then you have so so amount of impact per minute. This hammer has around 50 up to 200 impact per minute when I press down the lever to open the valve where the air pressure go inside the hammer. Forging is a very, is the, um, the ground part to, to produce metal. Everything what you see, what you use from, from silverware up to your eye beams or your radios, everything is primarily forged. And that is uh, why forging is so important in the metal industry. Um, I do that at my company from my, um, this, this is a play from my, from my chief and uh, we forging their tools the sizzles, um, blades, and other tools for the, the concrete and construction industry. We can forge knives too, but the problem is we have to change the whole, whole matrix combination to the bear, and that is the big uh, problem when you forge knives. You can there is uh, this maybe you you maybe hear damas steel that is not directly the folding of knives, that is um, a kind of forging. You not directly fold a knife, you um, make a 
cold heat up and cool down and that makes this specific shape of this knife this pattern in this knife you never really fold steel really that is not really possible to do that um, the, the benefit of forging is you can form very thick steel the chisel has around the thickness from up to 40 millimeters very easy because you heat it up and then you go with the hammer down and and bend it if you do this cold steel can be break that is a big issue of this forging system other of this metal uh, that is why forging is great um, the downside of forging is forging is extreme exhausting for the body you have to very strong body huge guys I'm not a huge guy I'm a mid-side guy um, for me this is okay to do forging but if you're smaller that is you are not possible to forge some countries you, are, you if you have not the appropriate height you are not allowed to forge for example in the United uh, in some states in the US there's not there's a law that um, some people are not to allowed uh, to forge and in Germany there is some similar thing but that is not so strict that is a big issue um, I recommend uh, guys for forging they are around 1.7 meters up to 2 meters because then you can uh, handle this heavy steel things the other downside problem is maybe you know or see it in the video I wear special gloves to protect my hand against the heat and there um, you need this glove because you completely burn down your fingers and I need when I forge every three days new gloves to completely burn it down um, I want to try in the future bunker gear gloves that's the silver one from the firefighters they may be a bit stronger and um, tough again this heat but it's a high heat for um, every material the other thing is you need okay I wear they're not the proper gear against the heats and the sparks normally you wear a, a apron or thick uh, pants to protect against the uh, sparks and my gear is not really uh, protected me I have my shirt have complete everything holes my pants are completely wrecked because of this heat and problem and that is one of the downsides from forging the last big problem of forging is um, the fire hazard if you are not if you have the fire not in real control for example in this place you can may in the bad in the absolute bad thing burn down the whole company uh, because it's a, it's a fire it's a open fire and you work with oil you work with coal that burn extremely fast and that is the problem the last concerning of forging is the impact the shaking and impact you in you, you have in the bones if you have, hold the chisel you may see that in the video um, like this and every time you have this impact in your bones and if you do it often um, you can break your uh, joints and bones or damage it um, that is the down the big the best thing for forging for personal it's it makes sometimes fun to do it because it is this is the, this is the first step to uh, work with metal mostly every metal if you see is pre-forged and, and forged uh, for further use um, yes uh, what I want to say after forging, I get um, sharpened the chisels and you have a flat head and the square head and a big head chisel and that I do it on a grinding stone and I grind it in a specific angle. We use around 20 degrees per side, so I have 40 degrees edge and then after this we I go to hardened this whole chisel, chisel thing in the speci uh, special oil bath 
um, there is a time to harden and cool down it. I hardened it in the fire again to a color like cherry. Then I put it out, out, put it in the oil bath for around 20 up to 30 sec seconds. And inside the steel something happened, the coal um, C, C2 or C1 is going up. And there's a special diagram you can look at the internet. And this is complicated to explain it now in this short video. And out of this hardening, I put it away this whole chisel and the chisel is completely ready to use. And then you can, re can, you, you can use it for demolition, for example. Um, you can forge a chisel so often as you like with this, at the chisel of this size then you get problem to hold it. You can use uh, tools to hold it, but I not recommended it because that is a big, big pr problem to destroy the whole tools. Yes, I hope you know now a bit what I do with forging in my company. Um, next time I try to do a video how to sharp saw blades. There are two types of saw blades. Um, there are Hardest saw blades, inserts, and there are chrome vanadium saw blades. These chrome vanadium saw blades are ideal for using at firewood, and the other saw blades are good to cutting um, and formated big sheets of plywood, for example, for truck, uh, truck, truck construction, speaker construction, or pallet construction. And that is the next video, and I want to show you this. And if you have questions, you can ask me, feel free to ask me. And I hope you understand a bit of my work, what I do. Normally, I work as a cutting machine operator, but I do this sometimes as a second job for my weather, not weather, I mean chief, because the problem is, um, because the problem is more and more guys does not know how to forge. I get my um, trainee in the, uh, in the past where I learned this kind of work and the current guys don't know, don't know how to forge as a matter. But that is not really trained in the schools or in the training um, uh, companies. So I wish you a good day and have fun with your work and I say now for bye bye.